Okay, Die Hard today. I'm really excited to talk about Die Hard. Um, I'm also excited to draw these eyes. Ba -ba -ba. But we got all these guys left. Talking about Die Hard and this may be, this one is a little different because in some of the other ones I've done, it's like I'm just like outright not feeling the hero at all. Like I'm just constantly annoyed at them, but this is Die Hard. It's a classic. It's Bruce Willis. Like, it's John McClane. So you can't hate John McClane. But I have to say, like, I've seen Die Hard. I don't know. I've maybe seen it, like, ten times. Like, not a whole lot. Um, I'm sure there's people who have seen it way more. Because, you know, Christmas movies. You watch them every year. But I've watched Die Hard enough to know that I stand by what I'm going to say today. Which is that I am always end up rooting for Hans even though I know how the movie ends so I'm going to start drawing because I've just been pointing with my pen I'm using a 005 as always and I'm drawing these eyes okay so I'm just going to go through the movie and you know just whatever so let's start at the beginning you meet John McClain he's awesome right you just like he's lovable he's this guy he's scared he's friendly this plain stuff, you know, and you're like, he's just this lovable, scruffy guy. Like, you're not mad at him. He's, he's John McClane. Um, one of the first things that you notice about John McClane is he's a little bit sexist. Like, he gets called out by the limo driver. Actually, I'll give John McClane some credit. The first thing you notice about him is that he's not like, he's a pretty down-to-earth guy like he doesn't want to sit in the back of this stretch limo he's like i'm gonna ride up front because that's how i am i'm just a regular dude you know blah, 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 blah. the second thing you notice is that he's a little sexist okay so that's strike one because women are watching this movie and they're seeing that john mcclain ruined a happy marriage because his wife got a better job than him and he didn't want to move because and then argyle the limo driver is like oh you didn't think she'd make it huh and John McClane is like, no, I didn't. John McClane did not expect his wife to hold down a career. And not only did she hold it down, she got like mega promoted. And you, he should just be happy for her. But instead, they split up. Like, what, what, what kind of husband is that? Yeah, if I called and said, hey, guess what? I got promoted. I'm like the vice president of this new company. It's in New York. It's a skyscraper. It's, we're going to be rich. Us and our kids were going to be rich. And my husband was like, ew, I don't want to move, though. I would be like, you suck. That's John McClane. Already, I'm like, okay. Um, your marriage is dying because of your pride, dude. Like, you're not Prince Vegeta. Your pride is not your best quality. Swallow it. So he gets there, and he's just like... He sees that Holly, his wife, is using her maiden name... And he's a little miffed about it. So he goes up in a bad mood and it's like, come on, like, this is not the vibe, you know? So his entrance is very like, Bleh. no one really notices him come in. He's, um, I will say him at a party reminded me of me at a party because he's just like, what's going on? So that's that. Um, now Hans, Hans walks in. Granted, he's like a villain, he's taking them hostage, but his entrance was dramatic. He's very suave, he has the like, he's very put together. You're like, who is this man? Like, swoon. Like, he's just got it together. So, in contrast to John McClane, you're like, this guy knows what he's doing. So, I have to say, like, yeah, John McClane is lovable but Hans Gruber is respectable and I like someone I can respect so let's also talk about Hans and his demeanor like he created a judgment free hostage zone like when he got to that party that party was out of control like in a good way like that seemed like a fun party it was a work party, but like there's people doing cocaine, there's people having sex in one of the offices, like everyone's wasted. And Hans is just like, all right, everyone just all in one room. Like I'm not here. Like one girl just had her boobs out and Hans didn't body shame or anything. He was just like, everyone, come on. So, and he was really pretty nice about it. 
Um, he's looking for Takagi, and he does kill him, you know, or he has him killed, but he didn't want to, and I think that that deserves, um, that's worth noting. He really wanted to have, like, a non-violent um, robbery, and Takagi just, like, wouldn't give him the little password or whatever, and Hans had to kill him, but he really didn't want to. He gave him, like, a bunch of, t a, a bunch of chances, so... I think, you know, that's worth appreciating. Um, going back to like the way he's treating hostages, like he is, um, he's good to him in a way. Like, so Holly comes and this speaks to Holly's like ability as a leader. And I just can't believe that John was like gonna let her get away because she goes up and she's like, look Hans, like bro, there's people who have to poop. Like, we have got to have bathroom breaks. And Hans is like, that makes total sense. I will do that. And then she's like, also, there's a pregnant woman. Like, she's super pregnant. Like, she can't be sitting on the floor. And Hans is like, you're totally right. I'll send out a couch. Like, he's willing to work with them. And I think it says something that Holly felt comfortable going up and making demands. Like, yes, she's like a natural leader, but also... Hans created an environment that was open to suggestions. I'm so into talking about this that I've barely done any drawing. And speaking of him, like, creating a, a hostage, like, an environment where people felt like they could make suggestions, that Ellis guy also felt, like, comfortable going up and talking to Hans. Now, that Ellis guy was an idiot, and he also got killed. But was anyone really sad about that? Because he sucked. Okay, so where am I in the plot? Like, he's killed Takagi... Oh, his crew. So, um, Hans put together not only an excellent plan, but an excellent crew. Like, first of all, they're all pretty cute. Um, most of them were pretty cute. And I appreciate Hans's dedication to aesthetics. They just had, like, such camaraderie. Like, he really built a great work environment for his henchmen. Like, they all got along. They're making little bets with each other. Like, um they were betting on whether or not Takagi would give up the password. Like, they're having fun together. Like, this is a stressful situation, robbing a new business or whatever it is. And um, they were having a good time because they, he put together a good crew. Like, he didn't just throw a bunch of people together. This wasn't a situation where you had to worry about people betraying each other. Like, he built a really good team. John just got lucky. Like, he didn't put anything together. He just got so lucky. Um, and that's why... That was another <laughs> reason that I would find myself rooting for Hans over John. Because John, Hans, from, like, the first moment, you see that, like, this is a really great plan. Like, he's kind of keeping it on the down low, what he's after... Like, Takagi thinks, like, you're just trying to hack our system and get, like, a couple bucks. You're so stupid. Like, why why would you do that? And then he also, like, when the cops come in, Hans is pretending that he's, like, a terrorist. And I forget what organization he said he was with. And he was like, you got to release my, like, comrades and blah, blah, blah. And he has them all totally fooled. And, I mean, he he had everything planned out, like, the FBI involvement, getting through the safes in time the safe in time um he even like even though the bulk of his crew was like german and there was like one random asian guy and then the hacker who was african-american like he made an effort to get like one like southern sounding like all-american guy to be the front desk guy and that is attention to detail i really appreciated just how much he thought it through. Like, this was an excellent plan, and I just really felt like he deserved to get what he was after. Because John, on the other hand, like, oh my gosh, like, this plan must have been, like, a year in the making. Hans is, like, he planned his outfit. Hans, like, he had this amazing group of people. He had, like, the van. He had um, the perfect guy to pretend to be the front desk. Like, he had um, everything he was going to say planned out. He had it all. Like, 
everything. And that had to take a lot of time and effort. And then here comes John McClane, doesn't even have shoes. He's just running around in his like wife beater. And he's ruining this plan. And like, it's so frustrating. Like he's not even, he's just running around in this building, like literally just like skipping. He doesn't, I said, he doesn't have shoes. And he just keeps getting lucky. Like the first guy who finds him, whose name I can't remember, but he's got the glasses and he's like really smart. Um, that guy finds him. John McClane's fighting with him, but that guy was like much bigger. Like that guy was the buffest like tech guy that I've seen in a movie. Like that was a nice break from stereotypes. Um, yeah, so they're fighting and you're like, there's no way Bruce Willis can beat this guy. Bruce Willis doesn't even have shoes. Like this guy is just gonna stomp on his toes. But Bruce Willis, I, I should say John McClane, he gets lucky. That guy falls down the stairs and his neck just goes and breaks. Like, talk about lucky. And then John McClane is like, okay, let me traumatize the hostages. And he writes a little note on the guy in blood. And then he sends the guy down the elevator. He's not thinking about like, you know, maybe I shouldn't like ship this dead body down to where the hostages are. That might be a lot. Like he could have just sent a note. But no, he sent the body because he's dramatic and he sends it down there and you hear women screaming and the brother of the guy is just heartbroken. He's like, oh my God, that's my brother. Like John, that was mean. I didn't see Hans parading any dead bodies around. Like after they killed Takagi, it's not like he put Takagi in an elevator and was like, look, your boss is dead. Like that was a little mean spirited, John. So strike whatever, you know, like uh, once again, I feel like Hans comes up on top there. Um, so now like people are traumatized, the brother is grieving, and I thought it was really sweet how much that guy loved his brother. Like you have to appreciate the bond. I don't have a brother, I don't have any siblings, so I like to think that if I was murdered, my sibling would go all out for me like that, if I had one. Anyway, um, look, I've done like almost one eye in this whole time I've been talking. Yeah, you gotta have the token hacker in your group and Hans knew that. A lot of villains don't assemble a good crew like that. Like they miss the hacker, they miss the muscle, they miss the brains. Um, Hans didn't miss anything. He had every type of person that you need to make a good team. Back to John just being like lucky, lucky, lucky. So he gets lucky that that guy broke his neck. I said that. And then he gets lucky that um, no one caught him while he was pulling all that glass out of his foot. That part is hard for me to watch. Like the people getting shot, whatever, and the the dead guy, whatever, but the glass, ugh. Like I always just happen to have to go to the bathroom when that's happening, because that's too much for me. But yeah, like nobody found him doing that. That was so lucky. He's also lucky that he didn't like bleed to death. Um, you know, he just keeps, how is Hans and his plan getting outmaneuvered by this cut up, barefoot, dirty shirt guy? And let's be honest, like, John McClane is a cop. It's just, it doesn't hit right. It doesn't feel right rooting for cops anymore. Well, speaking of John McClane being a cop and cops being annoying, um, he gets really lucky that Powell uh, is so cool you know he he just happened it just so happens that the cop who sent to go check on John's 911 call is Officer Powell because he's awesome he's such a team player he's so friendly he just went with the flow you know he was like probably the nicest cop that could have been on the scene imagine if it had been like literally any other cop they would have been like why are you why did you throw a body at my car like why are you up there like you need to not stop every other cop remember even agent or not agent but officer Powell's boss was like why is that guy like running around being like a vigilante like he needs to quit it if it had been any other cop John McClane would not have had all that help he wouldn't have known about like 
all their plans to storm the building. He wouldn't have known when the FBI got involved. He wouldn't have known about the conversations happening. He just got so lucky. And he also got lucky that that dead guy, the brother, had a walkie-talkie with him. Like, he just keeps getting these lucky breaks. And that's not fair because Hans didn't get any lucky breaks. Like, Hans was where he was because he worked for it. And I just, like, God, can, like, hard work be rewarded? I feel like movies do not have enough, like, fun movies. But most movies, they don't have enough heroes who, like, really plan. So many heroes are just dudes who are, like, fumbling around and it works out. And then the villain is, like, this really smart person who planned everything out. And for some reason, that's bad. So I'm a little bitter about that. So anyway like agent powell and not agent officer powell and argyle like john is so lucky that his limo driver was so cool like what if argyle was a normal guy like not so nice and he was like because argyle went so out of his way he was like you know what i will wait for you for like seven hours while you figure out if you're going home with your wife or not i'm just gonna park in the garage and like hang out and what if, if Argyle was just like any other limo driver, he would have just dropped him off and left. But because Argyle stayed, he like knew John McClane needed help. He saw the people like flitting around, you know, the villains, and he crashed the limo into them. Like imagine if he hadn't done that, how differently things would have turned out for John. Like John is so lucky that he had these two incredible, friendly, selfless, hard-working black men helping him and they're the real heroes honestly like bruce willis was fine but where would he have been without those supporting characters like, speaking of mean um the other so the fbi comes now we're at the stage where the fbi are here and they're also they were hilarious like they were funny i think their names were johnson and johnson one was black and one was white and they were like no relation like i thought that was hilarious they just had such a funny humor and they had a great rapport with each other like i thought that was really sweet um so there's a point where they are flying the helicopter and they're planning they're supposed to be like catching the bad guys and saving the hostages and they talk to each other and they're basically like planning on just blowing up the roof or something so that they can kill the bad guys which like what a waste like aren't you curious as to like how these bad guys were even able to orchestrate this plan like i want to know about why they're doing what they're doing but no they're just going to blow them up hans was really kind of very respectably solemn about the deaths that he was going to cause and all the cops were just taking like a pretty gung-ho approach to it mm -mm. so oh my gosh i'm trying to shade this eye properly and i i had to start with a new pen because i dropped my last one like right on the thing and it ruined it and it's it's kind of working but it just it's not as soft, maybe because it's not been used as much, but it's getting there. I'll give an update in a second. I just, I just really appreciated how well thought out all of this planning was. Like the moment when you find out that the FBI cutting the power is part of his plan to break th into the safe, it's just like, wow. I'm so satisfied to see that plan work. Like, it's just so gratifying to see that. Like, oh, if they could just make a movie where all it is is someone having a great plan and then the great plan works, I would watch that every day. Like, oh, I just love it. And that's why it's so hard to root for the heroes sometimes because they're just like bumbling through messing things up oh so, okay there's this one and um yeah you can kind of tell the difference in like the the pens like it's like a lot lighter so i'm gonna try to accomplish that with this one here um 
Oh my gosh, I'm just dropping stuff all over the place today. So where was I? So, you know, I'm watching Die Hard and I'm just becoming increasingly frustrated every time with John just messing things up. It's like, can't you just let them have this one? And I kind of, it's like, I see what Ellis was saying. Ellis was super annoying too. I just, ugh, like clearly hitting on Holly and um, walking around with his Rolex. Like, it's not Rolex. Like, no one cares. He was so annoying. And like, I don't know, who does cocaine and doesn't offer to share any? Like, he was like hiding in the bathroom with it. Like, it's a party, dude. Like, come on. Don't be selfish. Uh, also, like, you knew, did they know that Holly's husband was a cop? Maybe they didn't. But if I knew a cop was coming to a party, I would be more subtle with my drug use. But I guess, like, Ellis is just so up his own butt. Like, he was just so sure of himself that he didn't think anything would happen to him. And you know what? He's right. It's not like John McClane has jurisdiction at this party in New York. Anyway, I say that to say, like, Ellis is super annoying, but I also just kind of loved him. <laughs> and I kind of agreed with him when he was like, you're dumb cop husband is ruining everything like we would have been home by now if john would have just stopped <laughs> running around up there killing people and he was just like putting everyone in a bad mood like that brother guy i don't know either of their names but with the long beautiful blonde hair he couldn't even focus on the task at hand he's grieving like john killed his brother and put him in an elevator with a message written in blood like that's so and a santa hat that is funny, but it's disrespectful. Hans would never have done that. If John had been applying himself instead of writing, like how much time did it take to write that message? Hans is like hard at work, you know? He's like making plans and making moves and John is just up there like dipping his finger in this guy's blood and like writing messages on a shirt like a kindergartner. Like, that's not impressive to me. I'm not impressed. So, oh yeah, so, um... Yeah, I, I just, like, was kind of empathizing with Ellis a little bit. Like, yeah, let's just speed this up. Your husband, John McClane, he's slowing it down. Like, he's a party pooper. Who cares? Like, I just want to go back. Like, oh, my gosh, I was having a good time, and now I'm not. So, you know, I understand Ellis, like, trying to, like, use his skills as a salesman to save the day, and it didn't work out, and... I feel like if Ellis had been like 4% less annoying, he might have lived. Um, there's like a glare coming in. Stop that. Whatever. I also feel like, um, you know, I, I get why John didn't cover for him and lie to save Ellis's life. But also that was a little mean too. Like I do feel like if... Ellis hadn't been blatantly hitting on Holly, John McClane might have lied or handled that differently so that Ellis didn't get shot. Do you agree? Because I think so. And if that's the case, John McClane totally just let that guy die. That's kind of, hmm, that's personal. Mm -mm. None of Hans Gruber's killings were personal. They were just business. It comes to the final fight and... Once again, Hans is just being so stylish. He's like got like a great end of the movie quip to say, I don't remember. Oh, something about like John McClane being an American cowboy and he won't be riding into the sunset or something. Like just so classy. Like even in the midst of all these unexpected occurrences, Hans still has like a great plan for like this is what I'm gonna say before I kill this guy like to the end he was just like top-notch like really oh I just loved him so much and then John just like ruined it and like killed him and then pushed him off a building like why do you have to do this I just finished another one um I'm really slow progress because I've been just talking about these villains while I do this, but I'm having a blast. Uh, so here's what I wish would have happened. Like, yeah, maybe it's 
unacceptable that they killed a few people but i just think based on how good that plan was alone and based on how badly the fbi was handling it and how unplanned everything was with the cops and the media and john just running around like literally just running around i felt like hans deserved some credit like i feel like someone should have just been like you know what wow you had this so planned out a lot of people don't even know what nakatomi is and you knew all about them you knew about their bonds you knew about their safe you had this amazing team it's so diverse like good for you here's like one here's like a, a half of what you wanted or something like oh my gosh they would have been set for life i just feel like they worked so hard they deserved some of that money like they what were they, like they were just gonna live a peaceful life like i think they were gonna go on a beach or something like and he was gonna split it with all those people like how kind of him he had such a cool crew like i just if john mcclain had gotten the financial reward i don't think he was planning on sharing it with argyle and officer powell he probably would have taken it all home to his family and i feel like if all of this hadn't happened if there hadn't been a hostage situation would john mcclain have gotten back together with holly i feel like he probably would have just gotten in a fight with her and then flown right back home. Because we're coming full circle now. I said at the beginning, I got a hair on my pen, that John McLean was so full of his himself and like, a woman can't have a better job than me. Like, she's not gonna last out here. And he like, he was holding this grudge. Like, I don't think he was ever gonna apologize. Oh my gosh, he wasn't gonna apologize. I've just recovered a memory. Um, he was talking to Powell and he was like certain he was going to die. I think this might have been when he had all that glass in his foot. And he was like, when you see my wife, just like tell her I'm sorry. Like he was never going to apologize. The only reason he was going to have Powell tell him, tell her that he was sorry was because he thought he was going to die. Like he had to face death. To be willing to be like, Holly, you were right. This is a good job. Oh my gosh. Like, who is so full of themselves that they can't admit that their wife has a cool job? Like, are you kidding? He could have, like, retired and, like, yeah, New York isn't the bestest. It's cold. But he could have lived in New York and his wife would have made all the money and he could have stayed home with his kids. And instead, he, like, let his kids just move across the country and he what was his plan was he just gonna stay in california forever and be a cop while his wife is like ceo of the world that's dumb and i know it was like serious because remember she was like using her maiden name again like she wasn't um she wasn't thinking that they were gonna get back together and she wanted to because she had the maid like she was like, have you heard, has he left any messages? And he hadn't even left any messages. Like, I know there weren't cell phones, but there's like pay phones and stuff. You're telling me John McClane couldn't, or there was a phone in the limo. He couldn't have called and been like, hey, I would really like to stay with you. Hans Gruber, I think, if he had a wife, did he have a wife? What if he had a wife, you know? They just killed someone's husband. Um, but I think if he had a wife, he would not feel emasculated if she had a good job. I think he would be really supportive, you know? He, was, he just seems like a more confident, um, stronger character than John McClane. I also, I know I mentioned it a few times, but I just really appreciated, um, I don't even know his name, but the guy with the long blonde hair, like how much he loved his brother. And I feel like, like John McClane didn't have to traumatize him like that. John McClane could have just written a note, like I said, and then maybe that guy wouldn't have, like he would have found out eventually that his brother died, but he wouldn't have found out in such a triggering way. And then his life wouldn't have been ruined and things would have been better for everyone because that guy was a maniac and he's just like running around, like shooting stuff all willy nilly, going off plan because he's upset because his brother was like brutally murdered but not really but he doesn't know that he doesn't know his brother just fell he's thinking that 
John, um, like, killed him. But John did, again, like, write a message in his blood. Like, that's so weird. That's some serial killer stuff. That's not normal. So, understandably, long blonde hair is mad. And the, like, level of his passion for avenging his brother is so admirable to me. Because he... You think he's dead like 100 times and he just keeps coming back. Like even after he gets like hanged sort of with that chain and you're like, well, he's definitely dead now. And all the, all the hostages are like running down the stairs and he's just like hanging from the rafters and they're just like, ah, <laughs> that was fun. But anyway, but then he's not even dead. He like gets down somehow and he's like running out screaming like, ah, ah, ah. That was funny, too. And who killed him for reals? Wasn't John McClane. No, no. It was Officer Powell saving the day, as always. Officer Powell. They should really, oh my gosh, what if they remade Die Hard, but from Officer Powell's point of view? Like a whole day of just Powell just at work, and then Powell buying those Twinkies, and then... Because that moment where his car gets shot and he's like, you just, my car has been turned into Swiss cheese. Like, that's one of the best lines. I would love a whole, oh, they should, mm, since they're like doing this thing now where they're making everything into a mini series, like, oh, the nutrition facts of a monster, make it a mini series, put it on HBO, people will watch it. They should do that with Die Hard, make an Agent Powell Die Hard mini series. Who do I have to call? Do, do I call HBO or do they call me? This is a really good idea. And it affords such opportunity for a diverse cast because, like, there were so many... Mm, you could, it's been enough time. Like, aren't they already remaking... They're already remaking something that was just made. There's a live-action Winx saga. Like, they can do this. It's been, it's been long enough. Um, I don't know who you would cast as a new Hans Gruber, though. I don't know. You, no one could do it better than Alan Rickman. Ugh, and then it's so it's so sad, like the end of the movie sort of when Alan Rickman is falling off Nakatomi Tower and the bonds are just like floating around everywhere and you just see in his eyes like I cannot believe this is happening to me. Like because he worked so hard, planned so much did his research. He even knew what kind of suits Takagi wore. He knew all the deets. He even knew all the deets of like his fake plot, like the terrorist thing. Like imagine doing all that work and then just some guy in like the world's dirtiest shirt outsmarts you and ruins your plan. The characters of the henchmen were so funny. Like there was, um, I don't even know his name, but it was like the Asian guy with the longer hair and he was supposed to be kind of like waiting for the FBI to storm the building and he's like crouched down and he's behind um like a snack stand and he like eyes the Snickers bar or the Butterfingers or whatever it was and then he eats it I just thought that was so like I don't know endearing it just was like funny seeing these henchmen who were like okay I gotta kill people but ooh candy like that's cute I didn't see any I didn't see any of that in um, Bruce Willis or anything. Like, all the cops, they were just, like, bloodthirsty. They never had a cute snack moment. Officer Powell had all those Twinkies. I didn't even see him eat one. Oh, John McClane did bite into, like, an ancient Twinkie. And that's another reason I lost a little bit of respect for him. Like, what did you think that would taste like? You can't have thought that would have been edible. You've only been up there for, like what was it like eight hours you know like I know like you're feeling a little hungry but you can wait like you don't have to eat trash and if he hadn't eaten that whole day that's just bad planning and that's his fault like you had plenty of opportunity while you were in the airport while you were on the plane and while you were at the party to get yourself a snack and you didn't because you didn't plan things out right do you think, I bet you Hans Gruber had like a whole, um, I bet you he had like a packed lunch for each of his squad. 
I bet he did. He had everything. Because he had those Diet Cokes. But those might have been at the party. There was food at the party. But I still I stand by what I said. I'm sure Hans Gruber brought snacks for his people. Oh my gosh. He just like... One of my favorite villains ever. I love him so much. He's just the greatest. I'm going to draw this one more eye. And then I guess like I really talked through the whole movie. Those were like my f the parts that stood out to me the most. And I've watched it a bunch of times. Now I want to watch it again. I have not watched the other ones nearly as much because there's not like a staple time of year to watch them. Like Die Hard's a Christmas movie. You watch it every year. But what are the rest of them? Wasn't there a moment though in one of the other Die Hards where... I think this was one of the other diehards. Like the villain <laughs> makes it so that the tunnel, something's gonna happen and cars going opposite directions are gonna drive into each other. I thought that was kind of funny. Like all these villains are coming up with these like really clever things. And the heroes never do. They never have like some fun, creative way to like ruin someone's day or like make someone's day better, I guess. They're always just kind of fumbling around. I just find it hard. It's like, it's just hard. Like, as much as John McClane was so lovable, like, I liked him a lot more than Heroes and other movies I've talked about, but it's still just really hard to, like, watch this guy who's not a good husband run around with no plan and just keep getting lucky and be happy when he, like, ruins Hans Gruber's excellent planning I just can't the more I think about it the more I'm like why why did it have to be like that oh poor Hans I'm almost done with this eye let me see how many I have left oh my gosh 32 eyes left I wasn't planning on doing them all today but now I'm definitely not doing them all today guys should really be wearing eyeliner I don't know why you guys aren't I'm assuming, I don't know, but I, I feel like you should imagine if um, John McClane had just like a little, a little bit of an accentuating something, it would have really heightened his look and I would have liked him a little more because like I said, he just showed up, oh my gosh, he hadn't seen his wife in how long and he showed up in like a t-shirt to her office party. I didn't even think about this. This is, she's like the CEO or something. She was high up and She's telling her boss, like, my husband is coming, and they send a limo for him, and John McClane wore, like, jeans and a t-shirt. Wouldn't you be annoyed if you invited your partner to, like, a formal event, and they came dressed like they were going to McDonald's? That's just not supportive. Alan Rickman came dressed, Hans, I should say, he came dressed... Oh my goodness. Hans saved their marriage. I'm just going to end on that note. Hans was the greatest. Here's where I'm at. Bunch of eyes. Let me know what you think. They're in like a triangle. I don't know. I love triangles. But thanks for sitting with me. I love Die Hard a lot. I don't know. I had fun. Bye.